Welcome to Easy Elim, Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic metals and we're going to look at the extraction of sodium. So previously we did a little bit of intro, uh, introduction to how extraction occurs, how we concentrate the ores and the different methods of extracting different metals. So um, sodium has some ores. So make sure you remember these ores because it's common for you to be asked the ores of metals. So we have rock salt, which is the main ore. Then we have also uh, chile sodpita, which is sodium nitrate, soda ash, which is sodium carbonate. But the main ore is a sodium chloride. So we also have other ores such as borax and sodium sulfate. So the extraction of sodium is obtained by electrolysis of fused sodium chloride in the electrolytic cell. So remember we said sodium also is in high in the reactivity series. So it uses uh, electrolysis as a way of extraction because of high of its reactivity. It doesn't use reduction method because it doesn't, it's not reduced by common reducing agents. So let's look at how the process occurs. So this is the electrolytic uh, cell, as you can see. So calcium chloride and calcium fluoride are usually added to the electrolyte. This calcium fluoride and calcium chloride usually lower the melting point of sodium chloride from 800 to 600. And it is important to remember these temperatures because you have to be very specific, especially when you are giving your responses in the exam. So once molten, the electrical resistance within the cell is sufficient to maintain the temperatures without external heating. So steel or iron is used as a cathode, as you can see from the setup. So we have the steel and iron, and then the graphite is used as the anode so you can see the anode at the center here and then we have the steel cathode at the center as well so the star steel is not used as the anode so you notice the cathode is steel but the anode is carbon or graphite so we do not use um, steel as the anode because if we use steel as the anode at high temperature, steel would react with chlorine. Remember, the chloride ions go to the anode, so because of the anions go, travel to the anode. So, and we know that we're going to be discharging uh, some gases in the anode, and one of them is chlorine. So, at high, very high temperatures, zinc, uh, chlorine usually reacts with steel. That is the reason why we do not use it as the anode, but we use graphite instead as the anode. So the steel wire gauge separates the electrodes. You can see there is a steel wire gauge in between the electrodes because it's, we use it to prevent the products, the product which is the chlorine gas and the sodium from mixing to form sodium chloride to go back to the initial reactants that we had. So let's look at the equations that occur. So during electrolysis, the sodium chloride dissociates to form sodium ions and the chloride ions. So at the cathode, uh, before we go to the cathode, I always like start to start with the anode. So the anode, the chloride ions are the ones that are discharged to give two electrons that travel to the cathode. And then to the cathode, you see we are preferring sodium ions over hydrogen ions which are in the solution. But because of the high concentration, concentrations of sodium ions, and because it, we have chosen a, a specific um, electrode, it helps in its discharge. So sodium ions are discharged at the cathode. So the sodium ions in solution gain those electrons to form sodium uh, liquid. So it is extracted in molten state. Remember, because the melting point was lowered. So the molten sodium is usually lighter than the fused sodium chloride. So it floats on the surface where it overflows into a separate container. So you can see the density of sodium is lower than sodium chloride. So the resultant solution, sodium chloride is usually collected in molten state 
floating on top of the electrolyte less dense than more mo it has it's some of the properties and you can be asked is because it's less uh, dense than molten sodium chloride and then it has also a low melting point in comparison to sodium chloride so at the anode as we said chlorine gas is given off which is a green yellow gas and it is evolved as a byproduct uh, so the negatively charged chloride ions migrate to the positive anode and they undergo oxidation to form chlorine gas. So some of the properties of sodium is it's a silvery metal with a low density and it has very low melting points and low boiling points. And some of the reactions it undergoes, it reacts with air to form sodium oxide. Uh, or our layer of oxide and then the sodium oxide reacts with more um, carbon four oxide in the air to form sodium carbonate and water so due to this series of reactions sodium is usually stored under liquid hydrocarbon such as petrol and, and kerosene so you can see it's very readily reacts with air so that's why it is stored under kerosene kerosene or petroleum so sodium burns in air with a yellow flame to form sodium peroxide which is white in color it also reacts with water vigorously you can remember from one work they talked about reactions of metals with water you can go back and check that out so it reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas is given off so if you measure the pH of the resulting solution, it's very alkaline, so it produces very high hydrogen hydroxide ions in solution. So sodium is stored under oil to prevent contact with moisture also from the atmosphere. So it's not only the oxygen in the atmosphere and uh, also with the moisture also with the, in the atmosphere. So the reaction between sodium and dilute acids is very explosive, so we never usually do it in the lab. Sodium also burns in chlorine to form sodium chloride, and sodium reacts with ammonia to form an amide, sodium amide, as the first intermediate, which further reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide and ammonia. So after that, we go to the uses of sodium, which is the last bit of sodium. It is used um, with lead in the preparation of uh, tetraethyl le uh, lead, which is added to petrol as an anti knock And then it is also provides glow in sodium vapor for street light lighting. It is also a good conductor of heat and electricity because of its low melting point. So it is used in nuclear reactors to conduct away heat and it is also used in modern airplane engines. It is also used in the manufacture of sodium peroxide and sodium cyanide which are used to extract silver and gold. And that brings us to this question. So we have electrolyte X. So electrolyte X is the brine or sodium chloride. Gas Y is chlorine. We are going to see. So this is the same electrolyte. So we have cathode, which is the seal, and the anode, which is the uh, graphite. So identify electrolyte X, we said is concentrated sodium chloride and gas Y is chlorine gas. And then write the equation that for the reaction at the cathode. So at the cathode, the sodium ions are discharged. So the sodium ions gain electrons to form sodium solid. And then in what state is sodium collected? It's collected molten and give two properties of sodium that is makes it possible to be collected it's less dense uh, than sodium chloride or the concentrated sodium chloride and it has low melting points that's why it floats and then the cathode is made of steel but the anode is made of graphite why why steel um so what you notice we said that steel 
reacts with fluorine at high temperatures. And then in the process, the naturally occurring raw material is usually mixed with another compound. So it is used, it's mixed with calcium chloride or calcium fluoride to lower the melting point from 800 degrees Celsius to 600 degrees Celsius. So it is important for you to remember these temperatures, especially when you're explaining. What's the function of steel gas cylinder to separate sodium from chlorine formed? Because the both of them would react. Then one use of sodium, it is filled in sodium vapor lamps that are used for making the glue, that used in street lamps. And then explain why sodium metal is stored in under paraffin because sodium is highly reactive. With oxygen and also moisture in the atmosphere. So state an industry that can be built next to sodium, we can build an industry that is used in the manufacture of hydrochloric acid because of the chlorine gas produced. So that brings us to the end. So next we are going to look at different metal that is extracted, that is aluminium. So see you in the next lesson.